Coming up on the best Kickstarter games of November. A co-op shooter where you're all tied together. An exploration game on an augmented reality space station and quite literally the game from hell. But first, let's recap the games from October. Project Automata, the industrial simulator, fell well short of its lofty target goal of 150,000 euros. Dapper Penguin Studio will continue to work on their game and hope to release a purchasable full alpha version before this year's end. Backdrop, the theatrical inspired RPG, also failed to get near its target sum of 175,000 euros. The developers will now work on producing a demo before relaunching another crowdfund. The multimedia RPG Lightseekers topped its $200,000 target. Our favourite Lost Ember blitzed its €100,000 target, raising three times that amount. Code 7 also secured funding, just reaching its $15,000 target. That's October recapped, now let's see what November has to offer. Quadcore is an arcade shooter designed for cooperative play. Whilst at university last year, the game's two developers, Adam Carmichael and Bill Blythen, identified that the key to co-op games is communication. To make communication essential to their game, they decided to literally tie the players together, as if they were in a three-legged race. The result is that if player one moves left, player two will be tugged along. Each player's actions directly affect the others, and so communication is encouraged. One of the neat dynamics in Quad Core is that the abilities of fallen enemies can be stolen, Mega Man style. There's flamethrowers, homing launchers, poison gas, healing lasers, shield projectors and much more. Adding to this is the opportunity to exchange these abilities with your teammates, leading to strategic combination and even designated roles like damage and support. In terms of funding, Quad Core's situation looks dire. The game is asking for £7,000 but it only has 800 with about a week left. When the game is finished, it will release on the Nintendo Switch as well as the three main PC operating systems. Nycro is a planet hopping adventure game with some pretty pixels and a few other genre influences. First, we want to talk about the story. Nycra's world seems to have a good atmosphere and mystery. However, outside of that, the story details given in the Kickstarter are either frustratingly ambiguous or boringly vague. Take for instance Q. She is described as born with free will and empathy, and it is said that actions are influenced by her compassion. It sounds interesting, but it could mean so many things. An explanation or some examples would have been nice. Other than that, we're just given vague ramblings about a mysterious past to uncover and some horrible darkness to defeat. We're sure it'll be interesting, but more detail would have been nice. The feature we most like is how you customise your drone. It takes you to another interface, with a projection of the machine's design map. This allows you to tweak the makeup of your drone and alter what kind of weapon it is. Gathering loot is another big part of the game, giving you access to more drone parts and valuable items to sell. We're not huge fans of the game's first world Maldus, which features prominently throughout the trailer. Its grassy terrain lacks detail and screams first level. The desert, ice and underground planets that were hinted at look far more interesting, and we'd love to see more of them. With a smidge over two weeks to go in its campaign, Nycra is $25,000 away from securing Kickstarter funding. If all goes to plan, expect to see Nycra next October. Shattered is a side-scrolling platformer with 3D boss fights. Platforming seems kind of basic, composed of double jumps and hazard dodging, but it will get more complex as development continues. We can already see that wall jumps and edge climbing are being worked on. 
This part of the game is also interspersed with four puzzles in every zone and what appears to be decently sophisticated sword fighting. The real fighting, however, takes place in the 12 boss battles. At its purest, Shattered hopes to create a fighting system that tests your timing and reflexes. It also involves dodges, dashes, combo chains, and utilizing the special abilities learned in the game's zones. Crafting will also determine how you fight, as you may shape yourself as a slight assassin or a battle tank. Crafting relies on enemy drops, which can alternatively be used as health replenishment. In essence, a choice between the short term or the long term. Shattered has a deep and fascinating lore that lead developer Maxime Wren has been working on for 10 years. One of our favourite details is that the characters of the world are silent and what masks they wear determine their personalities. The game even has its own language and decoding it will earn you a secret ending. We like Shattered. We have some concerns about its gameplay outside of boss fights, but we love the dystopic Kingdom Hearts aesthetic that it's rocking. With just over two weeks to run on its Kickstarter, Shattered is already more than halfway to its target figure. Expect to see it January 2018 on PC. The Station is a game about contacting intelligent life. The catch is that the aliens are fighting a civil war. The ship humanity sent has malfunctioned above the alien planet, and you have been sent on a reconnaissance mission. Arriving on the original ship, you'll find it abandoned. Exploring it will uncover what happened to its crew. Depending on how you look at it, the game could be classified as a walking simulator or a point and click adventure. You walk around finding clues and puzzles like locked doors. Everything you see or solve adds context to the world and tells the story. One of the key features of the station is its use of augmented reality within the game world. Both audio logs and computer interfaces are experienced in AR, making what are often tedious tasks more seamless and accessible. The visuals here are really crisp so far, but we were even more impressed with the sounds. From the subtle splashing of fish in the tank, to the thud of a mug on glass, everything sounds real and satisfying. These little details make us confident that the presentation of the game will be fantastic once complete. Something we'll be looking at is comparing the station to Gone Home's follow-up to Coma once both games are out. They seem to be very similar, so it'll be interesting to see the differences. The station has reached 75% of its Kickstarter target. It should be out next year during the Northern Hemisphere summer, after which development will begin on consoles and VR. The first time I watched the Agni trailer, I had to look away. Even now, I internally shriek at the thought of it. Just below the video on its Kickstarter page, the description reads, The most terrifying vision of hell in the history of gaming. It sounds like typical marketing hyperbole, but it's not. It's very real. The buzzing swarm of fleas, skeleton stacks, rotten flesh, yellow smoke and garish light are all so palpable that you can feel the very heat and stink. But that is merely the appetizer. Freakish demons and wailing martyrs trot about as if the place was Arkham Asylum for the afterlife. Blood spills and desperate cries echo from every corner of every wall made of butchered humans. The whole world makes fire look ocean calm by comparison. Thankfully, the ultimate objective is to escape this hell of hells. This involves uncovering patterns, which you then must draw onto sacrificial stones with your own blood, as well as possessing martyrs and demons and whatever abilities they have. After an extremely positive public reaction to Agony, developers Mad Mind Studios have promised to make the game bigger than originally intended, so expect more features to come. I won't play Agony, in fact I intend to go nowhere near it. It simply creeps the hell out of me. But I think that's also a testament to how well Mad Mind Studios have executed their vision of terror and suffering. So bravo I guess. Agony is already funded with just under 3 weeks to go. Mad Mind Studios are aiming for a May 2017 release on PC with no word on releases for other platforms.
Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former.